Welcome. Today we're going to be going over some examples of mathematical proofs. Uh, and we're going to be cons uh, focusing on a specific uh, topic of functions on sets. Okay, so uh, let's just get started. So the, the, again, the major goal, of course, is to is kind of twofold. One is to you know uh, actually prove some uh, sort of you know explore some theorems, uh, explore some theorems, explore theorems, and also for the second goal is to uh, again uh, you know practice. Uh, uh, proof. Okay, so let's talk about these theorems in particular. So we're going to be talking again about uh, functions on sets. So uh, as we've seen in previous videos, we have some function, and it's going to uh, have values or or um, take objects in a set A and map them into some set B. Okay. And so typically we write this sort of schematic diagram as A being this set here. And there's some arrow, there's this essentially a mapping. There's a point X in A that gets mapped to this other set here, which we'll call B. And then we'll call that Y. So F of X equals Y, where X is an element of A and Y is some element of B. Okay, so that's the general framework here, and let's write down a few um, a, a few definitions. Of course, we have the image, which we explored and defined uh, thoroughly in previous videos, but I'll write it down here again. So an image set, an image set, of course, is uh, what we call f of a, and this is a set, and it's equal to all the points y and b, such that. Uh, um, <coughs> such that um, f of x equals y uh, for all x in a. Okay, so if I take every point over here in, uh, in the set a, what kind of set is generated over on this side? Okay, so that's good. And then there's the inverse image set. And we're going to call that F inverse of um, uh, of uh, uh, you know I, I just made a mistake here. I'm going to um, go over. Uh, uh, we'll we'll call this uh, set D here, and we'll say that this is um, any set D, and D could be a subset of A. I'm just going to be I'm going to be a little bit more general about it. D could be all of A, or it could be just part of A, but I'm just going to do that definition here. We'll do the same thing here, and I'll say that there's a set D. Uh, and here, what we're going to do is we're going to say that this this inverse image set is going to be the set of all points x in A. That's the type of of objects we're looking at, subject to the condition that um, that uh, uh, y all it's all the points y in D, uh, which is a subset of of B. Now we're going to consider D being on this side, all right? Uh, and it could be the entire range set, or it could be just part of it. Um, uh, and it's the such that such that f of x is equal to y. So the image, of course, is is all these points over here that generate the set D that resides in the output or don't or range set. Okay. So those are our definitions, and what I want to do now is is uh, um, is of course the major questions. Of course, is the, you know the major questions are you know you know how uh, does um, uh, how does you know x map to y uh, given given um, given a, a, a particular function that we want to study. All right, so we have some really uh, uh, you know, powerful theorems that can help us parse these things. And so what I'm going to do is actually write down those theorems down. Okay, 
So we're going to write down a theorem, and then what we're going to do is, is prove at least part of the theorem. Okay, uh, we'll leave some of these as exercises for things you can practice, but we're going to write down the theorem. So the theorem, the theorem we're going to write down is um, if uh, we have a function f going from a to b, just like before, and then we take a set e, which is, is some subset of our range set, and we take f to be also another subset of our range set, okay? Uh, and then what we can say is then, uh, then uh, the following uh, um, equalities hold. Okay? The following up qualities hold, and there's three of them, and the first one is as follows. If I looked at the inverse image of the union of these two sets, it's equal to the inverse, the union of the individual inverse images. Okay. And another statement that's also true is if I look at the intersection of two range sets and I look at the inverse image of that intersection it is equal to the intersection of the individual of the individual inverse images okay so these are equalities that we want to prove and then finally uh, C and then I go if F so we have to have an additional condition on F and E. F is actually a subset of E, okay? Uh, then the following is true. F inverse of the set E excluding F is equal to the inverse image of E excluding the inverse image of F. Okay. So these are incredibly useful uh, properties uh, to have. Uh, and again, the reason why is if, if we're studying some domain or some sort of, uh, some sort of range sets, we want to break it up into two pieces, maybe E and F there. Uh, and then we want to then explore uh, what happens over in the domain side. It might be better this, this sort of divide and conquer where now we can work on each part separately and then union them later. Okay, so this, this is a, a, a sort of a, a distributive property of sorts. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here today, so what we're going to do in this video oh, I'm spelling bad we're going to prove we're going to prove A. Okay, and the other two are going to be very similar and so uh, uh, you can try to do those on your own, but they're, they're essentially the same process. So a lot of the, the sort of repetitive methods here. So we're going to try to prove A. So proving A, um, let's, let's now just explore this, kind of look at a bird's eye view of what, what we're doing here. Okay, so again, we have this uh, domain set, which we call A, and then we have a range set on this other side here. I'm going to draw them very big so we can see. And then I have a uh, you know, set E that's, um, that's um, in the range. And then I also have some set F that's in the range. Now, uh, what I'm saying is then, if, it, uh, if I look at the inverse image of that set, I look here, the inverse image of F, um, whether I union these together and then map them over, or if I union them separately and map them over, I get the same result, and that means set equality, okay? So again, the idea here is we're, we're going backwards. We're taking uh, an E and an F, we're mapping them back, and I can either take the inverse image individually and then union them later, that's this side here, or I can 
take the inverse image of the union and the range space, and then I'll get the same result. Okay. And so the idea, this, I mean, like a lot of mathematics, this is a divide and conquer principle. The idea that I can break up uh, a big set like this of the union together into smaller sets and deal with them individually is a, is a really, uh, it's an advantageous uh, method. A lot of times you can break things down into smaller pieces and handle them separately. This is a, a useful tool. And so that's why these types of theorems here, or these types of statements are useful and why they're worth uh, studying and making sure that you can always do this, okay? And that's the essence of this proof, uh, or the essence of, these, of, of this theorem. So let's now go through, and, and uh, again, we want, again, the goal then here is to, uh, oops, got a little off there with my pen. Goal is to uh, prove A, okay? And let's write down what A is again. It says that the inverse image of E union F is equal to the inverse image of E union the inverse image of F. Okay, so, uh, so what's our approach here? So the approach is actually... Uh, the, the real strategy for all proofs here is is essentially unrolling, and I'm going to use, this is a non-technical term, but it really kind of expresses what, we're going to unroll the definitions in, inherent in the statement. We're going to unroll, unroll the definitions and definitions uh, are contained in uh, the above uh, statement. Essentially what we're going to do is uh, sort of break down uh, break down into to um, uh, more explicit explicit uh, uh, explicit uh, statements okay so these explicit statements so what we got to do and, and and the real and so let's break this down so this statement here that we want to prove is is that so we really want to prove a, a, a set equality statement. Okay, so um, in general, okay, so in general, the approach here as, uh, for a set equality is if I have two sets, and I'm, I'm going to write them down, just a uh, sort of as an aside here, we haven't actually gone to tackle this yet specifically, but in general what we have here is uh, uh, this, the statement that two sets are equal, P and Q are equal, say, means means that if, I should write this down here, means the following, it means what? Uh, it means, I'm going to write it actually down in two statements, if if x is an element of p, it implies then that x is also an element of q. And another statement is also true. If x is an element of q, it implies then that x is an element of p. And so the, the, the key here is there's actually uh, uh, two uh, directions. Uh, we uh, need to establish. Establish uh, as, as valid. Okay, so that is, um, we need to, so that's, and, th and that really is what we mean by this unrolling. This equality statement, when we write that equality, 
we actually need to enroll it into these two independent statements and then prove both independently. So our task now, so basically we have, uh, so we can conclude from this then that we really have uh, two sub uh, proofs to do. Okay. So that, um, that is that, that what I mean by unrolling the definition. So the definition, the statement of equality is really two, uh, two statements in one. Uh, the idea that uh, if I start at P, I can establish this, this, the, the, that X is also an element of Q, and I can also go in reverse. So we're going in both directions. So we need to, uh, and that's what I mean by directions. It's the direction of implication here. If, if X is in P, then it implies X is in Q. That doesn't cover it completely for set equality. We also need it that if I find some object in Q, it is also in P. And, and that has to be true for any object. All right? And so we have to always start with some generic object. So we have this idea of breaking something down into two subproofs, And that's really important, the idea that uh, a goal of any proof is you have to unroll the statement into a set of substatements, possibly substatements, that each can be analyzed uh, in isolation. Okay, so uh, again, we're going very slowly through this as a way to uh, understand how to tackle some proof like this. All right, so let's actually get to it now. So let's go, let's prove, so let's start with subproof one. Which is, and, and this is a statement we want to prove, we want to prove if x is in, is in, um, if x is in f inverse of E union f, it implies then that x is also an element of this set. Okay, and this in this case is, is taking the place of my P, and that's taking the place of my Q in the original statement. Okay, so we're just dropping in the specific sets of interest. All right, and now, of course, we need to do a further unrolling. A, a further breakdown. a further breakdown of what these inverse image sets are like okay and that and that and that is really picking into the the properties of what inverse image sets behave like okay and that's really what our, the heart of our statement are is but the first thing we had to do is, is, is establish the, the basic definition for set equality and now we have to examine the particular sets we're interested in. we're no longer talking about generic uh, set P and Q we're talking about very specific sets which are these these inverse images that we have written down there alright so again we're starting here we're gonna take some uh, arbitrary element here so here's our here's the start of our proof. Um, proof. So we're going to take any x that's in the set inverse image E union f. Okay. And um, so we're going to take that. So we're basically going to pick a value, and it, ha it has to be any value. Um, and then, and then we have to use the definition, and then, again, we have to unwrap what the definition of that is, and that means, so that implies then, or, or meaning, that what it means is uh, uh, there exists a Y in B, uh, or I should say, not B, a, by, a Y in the, in the range set, E union F, uh, such that, such that um, uh, uh, f uh, such that f of x is equal to y. Okay, so y is in E union f. So that means, and we have to unroll now this definition, this process of unrolling the definitions. This means that either 
either uh, y is an element of E or, and that's the definition of a union, right? And that, again, we're unrolling the definition of what union is, or y is an element of f. Okay, so we have to go through two cases. I'm going to talk about case one here. y is an element of e. We have to cover all of our scenarios here. There's two scenarios. We have to look at both. If y is an element of e, that implies then that, that x is an element of uh, of the inverse image of E. Okay. Or, again, we have an or, case two, Y is an element of F. Now we have to cover the other case. So we have to exhaust all possibilities. All right. That would imply then that X is an element of the inverse image of F. Okay. So now we've written both of those down. But we have to say now, and this is where we have to start rolling back up our things. We notice that we have an or there, all right? So it means that x is either there or there. This means, or it implies, or meaning, meaning that x is an element of f union e or, again, that or really came in and became this union symbol, or f is the inverse image of f. Okay. All right. So now this this has it. Therefore, we establish the proof. So we conclude then conclude that uh, we conclude that um, if x is an element of f inverse of e union f, it implies that x is also an element of f inverse of e union f inverse of f. Okay, so we've proved this direction here. We've proved our subproof. So we can check that off our box. I can put a little box there. We've checked it off. And now this statement that we wanted to prove is true. Now we have to go and do the reverse. So subproof two. Okay, subproof two is we have to go backwards. So this is really the backwards case. The backwards case, which is if x is an element of f inverse e union f inverse uh, f, we have it implies then x is a is a is a is an element of f inverse um, e union f. Okay, all right. So. Um, uh, this one is going to flow very similarly, and it's the same sort of method, and that's the idea. So now we're going to start our proof. So we're going to, again, pick x as an element of this or that. Okay, and I mean this or that. I mean the inverse images union together. Okay. Um, that would imply, then, that that f of x, right, equals y, right, the output set, is either, uh, is either, uh, is an element of, uh, of e or f. Another way to write this is case one. Just like before, y is an element of e, in which case, um, or case two, y is an element of f. Uh, we conclude, looking at this statement though, we made this statement here. This statement is true, right? So this is true. Okay, so this is a true statement we've made here. y is an element of e or y is an element of f. Now we have to recognize that that is essentially the same. We can roll this back up now, this idea of rolling back up. Why then, we can conclude, this is an implication, we can make the statement now. A more compact version of this statement is that y is an element of E or F, okay? Of E union F. Okay, that looks great. And that would then imply that X is an element of the inverse image of E union F. Okay, that's just uh, unwrapping that definition again. 
Okay, or sort of uh, uh, of just rewrapping up the definitions as applied to our problem. And so we conclude we conclude then that uh, we conclude then from this uh, from from oops from subproof one and subproof two uh, that that um, f inverse e union f is equal to f inverse of e union f inverse of f and then uh, and then we can prove it so typically at the end of proofs when we're completely done with our proof we put a little uh, solid square and that just uh, um, establishes that uh, that we have finally concluded all sets of state statements that we need to make our conclusion okay um, uh, so again I want to just do a, a you know kind of the overview the overview and just to get what was the strategy here um, we typically like to break down Uh, d break down statements into uh, what I would call constituent uh, statements or definitions into constituent insti and constituent statements. Uh, that we uh, can um, can um, analyze um, easier. Okay, and that's really the first thing we do. And we saw that over and over again as we took a statement, we broke it down into a set of smaller, kind of more simple statements, and we looked at those individually. And then finally, we always have to then... Um, uh, uh, when we analyze, sort of after analysis, uh, we collect. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to go back up here. I call this the uh, um, the um, the rollout. That's my, uh, that would be my sort of, we roll out the definitions. We kind of break them out into smaller pieces. And now, at, and number two, after the analysis, we collect um, uh, concluding statements. To uh, make uh, bigger Uh, bigger uh, uh, statements. And typically this is uh, breaking down into definitions, that's a challenge, but also picking up all the pieces, all the little conclusions we make, and then making a bigger conclusion uh, or make bigger statements or conclusions. Uh, that typically is the hard part is recognizing when you've taken you have a, a collection of small statements and how to make that bigger statement I think this is probably uh, the hardest part in, in recognizing when uh, you, you can take all those small statements and create that bigger conclusion that tends to be the biggest challenge okay so that's challenging I'll put that in, in, in arrows all right and I really call this right here the roll up and that's the roll up. You're rolling up all of the all of the statements you've made into one kind of compact package. And I think that's the, an overview of proof in a nutshell. Okay. So in the next video, we'll cover some more examples of how to prove things, uh, and and, and uh, involving these same sort of um, uh, uh, proofs concerning images and inverse image sets. 
Okay, thank you very much.